Today we are in Evershaw in Dorset to continue our search for Britain's best afternoon tea. I'm here at the Summer Lodge Hotel and Spa and a little later on I'll be talking to Lord Sandwich whose ancestors invented the sandwich. The butty. Amazing. Come on, let's go for a brew. The award-winning Grade 2 listed Summer Lodge Country House Hotel and Spa. In the enchanting village of Evershot Dorset is surrounded by rolling hills and represents luxurious five-star country house charm at its finest. This relay and chateau property sits within glorious countryside in a picturesque village. Experience exemplary service and discover beautifully appointed rooms which are individually and lovingly decorated with traditional elegance. Before I settle down to have some serious brew time, I'm meeting Lord Sandwich at Mapperton House to get the lowdown on the butty. So tell me about the story of the sandwich because I love sandwiches, they're literally my favourite thing so I'm really interested to hear more about that. Well, it goes back to the port of Sandwich, which was the medieval port in Kent, where all our ships collected if there was going to be a battle. In the 1640s, the first Earl of Sandwich was actually called Edward Montague, and he fought alongside Cromwell because that's where he lived in Huntingdon. A few years later, the public were fed up with Cromwell and all his works, so they asked for the king to be restored and it was Edward who was chosen as the second senior admiral to go and collect the king from Holland. And for that, he was rewarded with the title Earl of Sandwich. So he had to decide, am I going to be called the name of Portsmouth, which was then the important, by then, but the important port, uh, or the historic sandwich? Well, of course, if we'd chosen Portsmouth, we'd all be eating Portsmouth. We would then go on a hundred years to the fourth Earl of Sandwich and he made the word sandwich famous. He chose to eat with one hand. And the reason the encyclopedias say that he was gambling all night and only had one hand free, well, we don't accept that in the family. Uh, the second possibility is that he liked to hold the hand of a lady, which seems rather improbable, but possible. And the real reason is the one we all know, which is that you haven't got time mm. to eat and work at the same time. So you need a hand free to sign letters and all that. So that was the story of the sandwich. People must have said, you know, I'd like to have one like sandwich, you know, just an open piece of bread. It's really interesting. It became a common part of our language. Yeah, sandwiches are everywhere, like it's sandwich shops. Well, I mean, in every small town in the world, including Siberia, I believe. Yeah, it's gone global. <laughs> Except they're called sandwich with an Sam SK at the end. Oh, really? Sandwich? No, I'm not, just you. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the first Dell, and he took up the practice of chocolate drinking. And chocolate was the new thing. It was the remedy for, oh, um, depression, as we now call it. Anything, yeah, it you know. Yeah. Well, exactly. We're all enjoying chocolate today. But that's when the fashion came in. So same time as tea, you had chocolate. And he even wrote down a recipe for chocolate ice cream. I love choc ices. Well, he sold one of his recipes to the king for a large yeah. sum. Because the king enjoyed drinking yeah. chocolate as well. That's amazing. So that's really the story of the sandwich and, and the tea drinking. And, and the chocolate. And the chocolate. <laughs> Everything all rolled into one. We've got a lot to thank them for really, haven't we? We have. And <laughs> choc ice is, is a very good conclusion, isn't it? 
I'm here at West Bay, home of Broadchurch. Recognise his house? I won't be solving any murders this week. I'm just here to find out how people like their brew. Come on. Excuse me. Hiya, you're right. Just a quick couple of questions. Tell me exactly how you make tea. Uh, boil the kettle. Yeah. Tea bag in first. I'd have my boiling water on top of that and then I would add soya milk. And I drink it with milk, usually. Tiny, tiny bit of skimmed milk. Has to be skimmed milk, yeah. unfortunately. Are we talking a cup of tea or a pot of tea? You still <laughs> do it in a pot with a tea bag. Tea bag in first. If I've left it to brew a bit, I'd take the tea bag out. Then I put my milk in afterwards as soon as I take my tea bag out. Just the press of the tea spoon yeah. and out. But otherwise I would let the tea bag stay in because with the milk I'll gauge the strength by what I can see the finished colour to be. I don't like it to stew for very long. I like strong tea. Leave it for a while to brew, take the tea bag out, no sugar. Any sugar? No, no. No, never. Real. Awful. Uh, what, what do you think about dipping biscuits in your tea? Love it, hate it? Yay, but only for a tiny amount of time. Why wouldn't you, if you can eat biscuits, enjoy? If Mark makes me a cup of tea, yeah. I can tell that sometimes he's put too much milk in because it's not as strong as I like it. If I want to go posh, then yeah. it will be a teapot and tea leaves. But frequently it's a tea bag in the bottom of the mug, left in, frankly. You leave it in the home? Yeah, yeah, left in, you want to get a proper taste. Uh, I can commend it to you. Time to head back to Summer Lodge to enjoy some afternoon tea. Sugar? One. Brown, please. Brown and yeah. tea? What, is that wrong? Oh, I'll have white then. God, is that wrong? Did you give me a white? Yeah. <laughs> Brown's for coffee, is white's it? for tea. Oh, I just haven't got a clue, have I? We are here with the executive chef, Steve. You right, Steve? Very well, thank you. Sweet. Okay, now we're going to have some afternoon tea, yep. aren't we? Yep. And you're going to talk to me about what makes a British afternoon tea. Like what makes it so British and what does it always have to include? I think it's a bit subjective. Right, okay. Uh, for me, personally, I think there's elements that you have to have. Yeah. It's got to have scones, got to have jam, you've got to have clotted cream. Scone. Scone. You're northern. It's still it's a scone. Scone. It's so wrong. Okay, okay, okay. You've got to have some dainty sandwiches. It's got to be cucumber, which you would pretty much never order anywhere yeah. else in your life. But on an afternoon tea, it fits. Smoked salmon, uh, egg and cress. Mm. Quite all those three quite traditional. Maybe a little bit more modern, the coronation chicken. It's still a good well-flavoured yeah. afternoon tea yeah. sandwich. Yeah, and why are the crust cut off every time? Is that just to, Everything to look nice? Everything just to be, to look nice, Is to it? be dainty, to be as delicate as possible. Yeah, and you have um, to have the scones. And the scones with cl clotted cream and jam, strawberry yeah. jam. And then again, a selection of cakes. It's got to have some sort of tartlet. You see, we've got two on there. We've got a lemon meringue and we've got a strawberry tartlet. It's got to have something with shoe pastry, be it an eclair or a yeah. shoe bun with a nice cream filling. Shoe bun? What's, what's one of them? Which one's that? A shoe bun is just effectively a round eclair. Oh, right, okay. Just so, a posh word for a shoe yeah. bun. Um, and then the rest of it can be sort of interpreted by, by yeah. the chefs and by, by their clientele. Macaroons are very fashionable. Yeah. So we make four or five flavours of macaroon each mm. week and then mix it up on a daily basis. We use a bit of chocolate brownie, there's a little bit of a red velvet cheesecake. So we've sort of deconstructed the yeah. cheesecake, whipped up the, uh, the filling, made it a little bit lighter with a bit of extra whipped cream through there. So a nice vanilla cheesecake, bit of red velvet cake yeah. on top. Oh, winner. And your suppliers, are they all locally to this area? Wherever possible, mm. we're looking to, to support local and use local wherever we can, yeah. as long as the quality is at the standard that we need. So obviously for meat and fish, it's easy. We're in the middle of the Southwest. We've got the, the West Bay, a 20 minutes drive from here. So fresh fish from the market there, easy. All the meat from the Southwest. We've got a guy in Sherbourne that produces the honey for us. So okay. that's only sort of 10 miles away. Yeah. So it's a real sort of uh, niche yeah. producer for the honey. Uh, eggs come from Beminster, six miles away. Oh, right. Again, so it's all... they come down to us four or five times a week with, yeah. the, with the fresh eggs, free range, obviously. 
Okay. Um, and it's what, is it made on site or do you get any of the cakes in or? Everything is made on site. Really? The clotted cream is local, mm. locally produced from local milk as yeah. well. All the cream and milk and butter that we use in the cakes is also all local. Wow. So, you know, try and reduce the food miles, yeah. try and reduce the footprint as much as we can while still developing and, and, and delivering a top, yeah. top end product. It's just yeah. taking things to another level. Pretty impressive though. It's quite a good spread. And you're going to walk away full. There's not many people want to do that's what want I to do about. dinner or tea yeah. after they've had a proper tea. So exactly, yeah. It's proper it's, British, uh, isn't it? To have yeah. Afternoon tea. You start sitting down in a in a room like this around three well, o'clock on a nice day, and yeah. you know this can last two hours. Yeah. So. And it's such a lovely setting, isn't it? Um, just like walking around it and everything. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I mean. It says a lot. I've been here 14 years. 14 years. And for a chef to stay in the same place for that yeah. long is, is you know, relatively, yeah. relatively sort of unheard of. I think afternoon tea, though, you know, for people with different tastes, it's literally got everything, hasn't it? Something sweet, savoury. It is effectively a three-course meal yeah, it is. on a stand. Yeah. You know, savoury, sweet, and, and the scones as the third course. Mm. Uh, and then you can sit and argue all afternoon as to whether it should be jam first or cream first. Oh yeah, what should it be? Oh I my. think it should be cream first and, and then, then you jam. Put the, the jam. And the jam sticks to the cream and, and other, I've seen some other people, people have it like do, a sandwich as well. Yeah, I mean that gets pretty messy when the yeah. scones and the jams oozing out everywhere, but each to their own. I don't think there's a right or a wrong, there's wrong not, way. Is there? No. Like with scone and scone. Scone. It's kind of a kind of a <laughs> Scones. Well, thank you so much for that, Steve. My you know, pleasure. Great little insight. Thank you. To the afternoon tea at Summer Lodge. Thank you. And should we tuck in? Absolutely. Let's, let's, do let's it. go. Let's go. My time in Dorset has come to an end. Until next time, tea drinkers. Onward, driver.